right now I would like to invite Marco from 3D Survey Company. And we already received some questions about how to make photogrammetry process together with PPK solution. Okay, thank you, Maxim. Hopefully you can hear me and you can see stream. I'm yes. already sharing. Yes. Uh, we yes. will see quite a lot of data sets. And of course, uh, some of them will be also from Topodrone PPK solution. Maybe just short introduction. We are developer of mapping and aerial image processing software, 3D Survey. My name is Marco, and I'm actually a product manager at 3D Survey. I started in 2011. Uh, at that time, there were no photogrammetry softwares actually available on the market. As I was surveyor, surveyor we were searching for solution, how to map, how to produce orthophotos faster than waiting for, you know, big uh, aerial uh, mapping scans uh, with the big planes and so on. At that time, dr drones come up. Uh, we bought first drone. It was a German one. Uh, pretty expensive, 40,000 euros at that time. And we start with development. And in 2015, we actually sold our first license of 3D survey software. Now we have uh, worldwide more than 60 partners who are selling our software. Topo Drone is our partner for Russia, and we are happy to work with them. What I would like to show you today is a quick general workflow from images to orthophoto that you will have a feeling how it works. You heard a lot about uh, LiDAR systems and so on. Now I would like to speak about photogrammetry and then at the end, how can you also combine photogrammetry with the LiDAR? Uh, I'm a surveyor by profession. Our software is developed by surveyors for surveyors. And what's the biggest benefit of 3D survey software comparison to Metashape, uh, Agisoft, or Pixford is that it helps everything in a single model. So you have a processing engine where you can produce orthophotos, point clouds, meshes, and then you have a lot of functionalities in the same software. So you can calculate volumes, you can calculate control lines, uh, you can draw CAD lines inside, connect survey maps, and so on. And this is what I will show you in the second part, few top features. So just really quickly with the help of PowerPoint presentation. So number one top feature is definitely volume calculations. Here I can just say we cover all the scenarios. If you have one surface, uh, if you have two surfaces, or if you have one realistic surface, one design surface, everything works in 3D survey. Profile lines and cross sections are possible to calculate it out. You should just select a line where you would like to calculate it, or you can import the XF line where uh, your construction company gives you and the profiles are automatically generated. You get the profile graphs, which you can export in a DXF, import in any other third part software as AutoCAD or anything like that. You will everything see this also in a real case. Then of course, contour lines calculations are possible. This is also one click function, works really nicely. Again, you can share as a 3D or 2D DXF to AutoCAD or similar software. We have really, really good point cloud calculation engine inside. So from 2D images, we calculate 3D point clouds and must say that our point cloud is super detailed, has really low noise uh, because it was done from surveyors to surveyors. Accuracy is the highest priority. Then based on photogrammetry data or LiDAR data, you can later on connect CAD lines in the same software. So you can set your layer, you can draw CAD and so on. Uh, right now, with the latest version, we improve the speed of our CAT snapper really much. So Simon can later probably sh show you how it works. Maybe also, it's much, much, much faster now. Everything works in a real time. So if you have 10 kilometers of road to vectorize it, this is the perfect solution for you. Then orthophoto calculation is there. We cover traditional orthophoto. We cover true orthophoto, if you like. And later on, you will see also side orthophoto from the facet. And because we are sur surveyors, we know you are never right time on a field, never right time on a construction site. Usually a lot of works are happening there. And if you need to calculate volumes, the construction guys, they are telling you, okay, I will still grab some material out there away. 
in this uh, kind of things, you need to have some manipulation tools that you can edit your data, that you can manipulate with point clouds. You need to hire them, lower them, create surfaces and so on. Over top function, no one else has it, X-ray or the photo. So based on point cloud, we are able to calculate out uh, X-ray or the photo where you can see building walls through the roof. So it's like a body scan and it's really efficient if you are working uh, with the cataster measurements or something like that. If you have a lot of buildings and you would like to get all the building corners, this is a super nice approach. We know you need to combine different data types. So not just photogrammetry, you need to add lighter data, you need to have total station data if you measure some points. And that's why we are not limited with anything. For example, if you just buy a phantom drone and 3D survey and you do your first measurement, for example, you have photogrammetry data really nicely, everything super. But then you have old measurement of open pit mine, still traditional way with 200 or 300 GPS points and big triangles. We add this option that you can join those data together, as you can see in this image, works uh, seamless. Then uh, really, really nice, stunning 3D models are available. This is textured, full 3D mesh. We're based on photogrammetry data. And if you have also lighter data, in addition, we produce uh, really, really detailed 3D models. We texture them with the help of photogrammetry. And uh, you can do measurements. You can share those projects uh, with the help of our free viewer or use a recorder in the software and create such a nice video presentations and share with your audience. We also support break lines support. If you draw some line manually, you can add those to surfaces. Works really nicely. Uh, and uh, quick sketch are available in the software. If you are forensic department or police department or anything like that, you can map really quickly, draw out with our CAD engine vector lines and save it everything as a PDF, PDF sketch. Here we have a 3D model of a building facade. With a one click, you locate your vertical plane and uh, calculate the vertical orthophoto from the facade and do the vectorization or orthophoto. So this is super easy, everything. And I already mentioned it, the flight path recorder, which is just a great tool to share your results with your clients. Uh, just record a one or two minute uh, video flight through the model and share the MP4 file format with them and they can see how it looks like. We are also, uh, there are not a lot of available options on the market that offers you a multiple point cloud import in the same project and so on. Uh, we cover this really nicely. So even if you have a GeoSlam or a total station uh, or uh, let's say a terrestrial laser scanner from more scan locations, you can bring all together and merge the data in 3D survey. Okay, this was a short PowerPoint presentation. Now I would like to go, I had some driver issue with my computer. So right now I'm connected with my phone. Great, let's share again. Okay, so this is a 3D survey. I will just go to browse my demo project. This is a really small one, just to show you the main workflow, how it works. I select the images. We read from the images exit data. The same goes with the Mavic Pro 2 from PPK solution from the top of drone. So they write nicely all the important data in exit data. So you don't have a separate log file. Then you have option of more than 5,000 uh, different coordinate systems we cover worldwide. You have option to set your own GeoEd model if you have, not a problem. And just click OK and you import those images in 3D survey. Here we can see map where we actually map it. In a telemetry view, you see those cameras in a 3D. We did a flight here on two flying height. And if I click now on bundle adjustment, the first calculation is already running. Here I have a bit more than 40 images. Small example, this will be less than in one minute. And we will immediately get the bundle adjustment of our first project. So these images will be immediately connected together. And as a result, we get so-called sparse point cloud. You can see it already now here. 
a few points from the field, uh, the cameras are matched together. The second step is orientation. We can do the orientation with uh, GCP points, with the telemetry. In this case, we didn't have an RTK drone. That's why the orientation was done uh, with the help of GCP points. And I'm just importing them in the software. I would just like to mention also in this phase, the 3D survey works with any drone, any camera. You can import all images inside. We are not limited to anything. And right now we are in orientation wizard, which is super nicely done. When I'm doing the orientation, I don't need to know which target is where. I just show to the software at least three targets. And then the software immediately recognized all the other. You see those green ones were automatically recognized. And if we have our 3D survey targets, which are black dots on white plate, those are also immediately automatically centered, okay? So as you see, so it, I did the orientation in less than one minute and all targets are immediately centered. This is the best user experience you can get on the market. And in the next step, you just get out the orientation result. And because this is a small data set, uh, a lot of ground control points, the accuracy is better than one centimeter. I just click on finish and we are already done with two steps of the processing. The second, the third one is reconstruction where we generate the dense point cloud. If I would select no high, this would take us 50 minutes for this data set. I would rather go and directly load in already calculated examples uh, that we don't need to wait. Okay, here we can see already calculated uh, point cloud from this camera. And next step in our processing workflow is classification. So we have a super effective classification. I would like to show you. So I click on classified. On the right side are standard parameters, which are good enough for 95% of the projects. They also work really nice uh, for light lighter data sets. So because this is not a photogrammetrical classification, it is geometrical classification. I just need to select one terrain points to help the software. And when I go to the next step, I additionally classified the point cloud and then if I deselect all the others, just my ground points are actually visible. Maybe I lose a bit of detail if I'm doing the volumetric on this part. I can also select and improve my classification a bit like so. And so I'm just manually selecting those area, right mouse click on uh, ground, set this class to selected points. And now I actually move those points from the other classified point to ground points, and we have them here. Okay, I'm satisfied uh, with this uh, result. Next step is digital surface model calculation. As you can see, the software is super powerful. I'm doing this on my laptop, and it's uh, everything in real time. So calculate new regular grid, 0 0.5 meter grid cell size, calculate, here we have our grid model. I can set a different height mode, show grid. So those are triangles, half per half uh, meter. And when I have this, I could go and calculate the volumes or I can go and calculate the orthophoto. Let's do that. Okay. And the orthophoto calculation is already running. And this is area. 150 per 150 meters. Usually surveyors in Europe have that, that kind of area. If you have bigger one, of course it takes a bit longer. Okay, here we can see really nice orthophoto. Here is our target. And what's interesting, because, because we have a high overlap between images, we can remove all the moving objects like cars, like machineries, uh, like people or anything like that. With a simple function, you just select your area of interest and you get all the images which are available for this area. And because the truck was moving during the data acquisition on the first image, the truck was still not there. Here, he's already working. So what can I do now? I just select my first image, confirm it and recalculate the orthophoto 
And now actually we have auto photo without track on it. Okay. So really nicely. And as you can see it in less than five or 10 minutes, we come from the images to the auto photo. At the end, we just generate some kind of general report where we put all the data from the processing together and you get out the word file. Let me just quickly open it. Which one shows you which version was calculated? When you have to the data acquisition, what's the camera perspective? Uh, how many images overlap between images? Camera positions, where the ground control points are located, accuracy of uh, ground control points and orientation, digital animation model, and everything like that. Okay. So this was really quick, quickly workflow from images to orthophoto. If there are any questions, please, please feel free to set them in question box. And what I would like to show you, show you next, it's uh, volumetric. We know the volumetric is one of the most powerful uh, application of this technology. There is no better technology currently available on the market. And this is one example for, from uh, our Canadian customer where they mapped some area with stockpiles. We see approximately 250 images were used here. They calculate out uh, the point cloud from this model. Looks like so, super detailed. It's already classified as you can see. I just click on undo to get all points back and redo to go back to the classified point cloud. They also calculate out mesh from this one. I think it's visible here. And they also import some cat points here. In addition, as you can see it here, not sure if this was the previous measurement and they tried to combine it all together. Uh, let's say it was so. And uh, what can I do in this case? So here we have actually a surface from photogrammetry. And let's say those were cat points from first measurements. If I go to cat, let me also deselect point cloud. I can actually use our clever algorithm and generate triangulated mesh from cat data. Yes, I can see here GNSS measurements. It's super fast. Let's turn also shading and so on. As you can see, we use a constrained Deluni algorithm to connect those points with break lines and so on. And let's say this was our first measurement. And then we have here our second measurement. Okay. And to calculate volume between those two is just nothing else than selecting my area of interest. I would you do just really quickly, like so. Let's go inside of the volume, as you can see it here. In addition, like here. And if I click on calculate volume from current selection, the volume calculation is already in progress. And the volume is actually visible here. Okay. So we see the upper surface, the lower surface, and the volume result is there. If I will do this in a real time, of course, I will take a bit more time to select accurate area and so on. But this is to have a good idea how it works. Then you see also this volume results on a port to total. And if you go to a volume, you can once again see how many fill and cut was done on the area. Let's maybe just turn off the shading. Okay, so in volume area, you have cut and fill. In my case, there is a lot of cut because the second surface was the lower one. And what you can see here, you can see if you move your mouse before and after values. So if I go to the highest value, there is a bit more than 10 meters, almost 11 meters difference before and after. Okay, let's turn off this mesh. Let's turn off the full 3D mesh, which was calculated before, and also some CAD measurement. What I can do in addition, when I have a, such a detailed model, 
one push button, calculate for two lines, 0 0.5 meter equidistance, calculate, and a couple of seconds, I have super nice contour lines visible here, visible on the contour line tab. If I would like to add show heights, I click on show height and I have values there. And what's the most important, you can easily share this as a 2D or 3D day set out or create a PD. If I combine them with mesh and click on height map, you get such a nice image then open. Okay, those were contour lines. And then another really interesting things are also profile lines. Let me show you how easy it is. So we are calculating profile lines based on point cloud. And if I go to calculate profile, I would like to create also cross sections. So when I will define my main line, I would like to create cross section every 10 meters and they should be 50 meters left and side, uh, left and right. Uh, I could also import that the XF file with already created line and calculate the profile lines based on this. The same goes also with the volumes, but now I will just quickly select it like so, where my profile line should go. And now I can see the software will calculate 10 profile lines from this model. Here we can see those profile lines in 3D. We can see those profile lines on Orto Photo. We can see those profile lines here also in red. Let's turn off anchor points and I will set the tick size to 60. It will be nicely visible. The legend and everything like that. So as you can see, everything is super easy. One click away, no hidden functions. And here we have longitudinal profile. Then we have every 10 meter cross section and so on. And then in addition, what you can do, you can actually uh, modify those profile points if you need. So if I zoom in, the small points are photogrammetry points, the big ones are vector points, anchor points, and I can grab this and move like that or anything like that. Double mouse click to add one in addition. In addition, you can add points as a description. So let's say here, highest point, and this set, and you can save this. And then everything what you do in a profile wizard, it's visible then also in CAD. So if I go here to CAD, oh, it was in the white layer. So here it's visible. Okay. So everything what you do in a profile, you have also in CAD. When you have the volume calculation and profile, you can export those general reports. So let's export the volume results out of it and profile reports and generate one quick Word file. Now we are generating it and let's see quickly how it looks like. So again, report with the area, with the numbers important, the profile positions and also all the graphs on it. Okay, cool. Next step I would like to show you is our cat. It's uh, possible to draw based on point cloud and based on mesh. If I have here regular grid mesh, I can drape orthophoto on it. So I'm just stitching node orthophoto on a regular grid mesh to have better perspective. And then, cool. So here we have it. Let's maybe just turn quickly profiles off and go to cat and now if i like to vectorize out road from this area i just create a new layer road active the layer set my color i prefer let's take red one uh, thickness of line and here i have my basic cat tools so i will draw a line and in addition i would like to create also points on break lines I could use also code like road or anything like that. And let's start drawing. So as you can see, you can go pretty detailed. You can do anything you would like. So it's like measuring outside in a field but you are measuring 
on the 25 degrees in our face. So it's super effective too, uh, because you have a really detailed data, you can do the really nice and fast vectorization in the software and all those possible options are available. I'm just doing this really quickly to give you an idea of what can you do everything with the software and uh, so on. So a lot of more functionalities are right now here. Maybe let's focus also a bit more with the combination of a topo drone either and also the PPK solution from the topo drone. That's why I would like to show you one data set we have from the topo drone guys uh, where they use a Mavic 2 Pro drone with their PPK kit. They did a, a flight uh, of an area with 400 images. They did actually a double grid flight with a perpendicular dome camera. Because this is a rolling shutter camera, we were really surprised with the accuracy of this data set. Uh, as you probably already hear, 3D surveys support roller, rolling and global shutter cameras. And we have really precise algorithm. And when we process those data independently, so without any ground control points till N, you can see here our point cloud on a medium. This is not even on high level. Here are ground points, uh, which we check then independently here. No, I need to bring them inside. So let me just go to data, load cat. So as you can see it here, our ground, ground control point targets, let's turn off the mesh already and compare it with top down and ortho. You see there on 2D positions, they are two to four centimeters accurate. Even if they co we compare them on an ortho photo, I was really surprised how accurate the position was there. So horizontal position was perfect. On vertical position, what we saw, we have a displacement in a height because we didn't use a Jewit model in this case. But what does it mean? So it means that the complete model is a bit too high or a bit too low. If I would use a Jewit model, it would be probably even better. But what I can do, I can measure really quickly uh, the height difference with measuring tools in a CAT. So I will first snap to point uh, on a ground control point, and now I will snap on a point cloud point. And I see we have a displacement of 72 centimeters in my case. And what I can do, I can just really quickly go to point cloud, select the complete point cloud. Okay, like that. And go to manipulation tools, increase height for minus 0 0.72 centimeters. Okay. And I lower the point cloud for this distance. And when I set this for one point, because we have a PPK, it will fit to any other points on the other side of the model. Let's just quickly check it. And now the checkpoints, hopefully you can see it via zoom, perfectly fit to new position. So if I go also to the second one, you can see this is less than a centimeter difference between points and I didn't fit to this point. So what we figure out with those guys together is if you have a rolling shutter solution and topo drone PPK, for the rolling shutter, we advise you to fly double grid mission and point your camera down, super important. If you fly just a single grid mission, you are never going to get so accurate results. If you have a global shutter like Phantom uh, drone, there is no need for double grid mission, fly a single grid and you are even more effective. Okay, if there are some questions, please fly, uh, write them in chat box. I will go with my next examples and then a few more in addition, just really quickly. The next example shows you actually the colorization function in 3D survey. We already speak this uh, on this conference and I would like to show you how it works in just a second. So what we have here, here we have uh, actually, again, results from Topo drone setup. We have, uh, I think, uh, DGI images for, for the photogrammetry 
and we have a scan from Velodan LIDAR. We did the photogrammetric calculations, so we calculate the sparse point loadout. We orientate the model based on known points. And then what we did, we import the leader point cloud from Topo Drone LiDAR. Uh, you can see results here. Currently, it has no color. I could color the point cloud based on a height. If you click on the scale, you have different colors available I like that. And as you can see it, you have a good presentation already now, but in comparison to photogrammetry, of course, the photogrammetry is much more presentation, a realistic one, but nevertheless, with the 3D survey, you can also color the lighter point cloud based on photogrammetry. Because everything is in the same system, I can just click on my imported raw point cloud, lighter point cloud, right mouse click, transform, oh, sorry, not transform, this is another function. I can click colorize. Yes, I would like to colorize it. And in a less than 30 seconds, you get colors from the photogrammetry to, to the leader. And now you can immediately see that here is some buildings, here are some trees, cars, road, and anything like that. Uh, we didn't cover with photogrammetry this part. That's why uh, this part is still without colors, but you can nice see nicely see the border between the leader and photogrammetry. So again, a really nice uh, combination from the leader to photogrammetry. And now just take our CAD tools and start vectorizing with a uh, super speed as possible. Okay. Our CAD results are able to export as a DXF or text file or anything like that. Uh, you can import a number of different file formats in our software, like E57, like class, LIDAR, anything like that. Farka, I would like to uh, describe this project in more, in more details for users, just okay. to show what was happened here on, on this field. It's a test site for LIDAR survey, and we made the survey with Phantom 4 Pro PPK equipment and with the LIDAR at the same time. And we post-process images in a post-processing way uh, and assign precise coordinates. After that, you just import these images in a software and just click process button. And accuracy in uh, XY position was perfect. And after that, what you need, you need to a little bit calibrate focal lengths. And as soon as you calibrate focal lengths, all your data set will be accurate in uh, altitude. After that, what you need, you just need to import lighter data, but and lighter data is always accurate. You don't need to calibrate anything. You just yeah. import lighter data and just push one button to colorize it. And this is the idea of our workflow. And this is why we would like to invite 3D survey for our presentation. What you need? You need just a camera with PPK. This camera can be installed on Mavic 2 Pro, on Phantom 4 Pro, on, you can use the P1 camera, everything, or any camera with PPK solution or with RTK solution. You just fly uh, together with the LiDAR, uh, without a uh, LiDAR. And after that, you can combine data set from the LiDAR and images from the drone, and software will colorize point cloud automatically. It's very simple process. Even you can fly in a different time. For example, with the LiDAR, you will fly at night. It's possible to fly at night because the LiDAR doesn't depend on any uh, light condition. And after that, you can uh, fly another day with uh, photogrammetry solution uh, and you will colorize and you will get accurate results. And after that, you can process uh, data together and you can use uh, LiDAR data for reconstruction terrain in a, for in a forest and you can use photogrammetry data to reconstruct terrain in a, in a road, for example, where photogrammetry is more clear. And this is the idea. Okay, thank you, uh, Marco. Just uh, sorry that uh, I just want to show you in more details. Thank you. Thank you, Marcin, to add it to this presentation. And of course, if there will be some more questions at the end, feel free, we can return it back and check. But as Maxim already explained, super interesting combination, photogrammetry and LiDAR. Each technology has some benefit on the other side. And if you can combine them, this just gives you the best possible tool. Now, I would like to show you some really, really new hot stuff, uh, which we just released uh, with a new version, which was officially released yesterday. And it's connected with videogrammetry 
So where you do videos with your phone camera or anything like that, and you can create model out of it. This is a bit different market, I would say, and but has a really, really huge uh, opportunity. Uh, what I would like to show you, okay, just silence a bit. It's in a real case. So if you have your phone, you have camera also with you. And if you have some kind of small construction site like this, where they are renewing uh, water pipes or uh, manholes or uh, pipelines or anything like that, and you need to document it, uh, you can really nicely do also with photogrammetry. You see how I'm moving my phone during the capturing the guys were doing, no one was actually, uh, I didn't even need a free space there. So they were doing a normal job. And I'm right now documenting, documenting the site for a later investigation. Okay, let's close this video. And then when you go to the new option of 3D survey, you have here extract images from video option where you can browse it and import this video inside. And then you have here automatic option, uh, which gives you the perfect frames from the video. So uh, you have different other options like end frame or FPS. End frame means, okay, give me every 20th frame and we will create 250 images from this video. It's good one, but you never know which one frame you would like to have it. That's why we put automatic where we calculate out with super clever algorithm when the camera moves for more than 20%, give me another frame. Okay, so, and let me just open one of the same project. Okay, I think here we have those results. So as you can see, here are frames we extracted from the video and the coverage between those frames overlap between those frames it's actually 80 percent and then after bundle adjustment we managed to match all those cameras together and based on this of course i could do the orientation on gcp points or anything like that here then based on this data we generate here point load out of it and it's really not bad and after point cloud, we generate out texture 3D mesh. And I think this is just another really, really nice option to do a really quick documentation of sites in a second. Okay. So as you can see it here, we have two pipelines. Just for your idea how big it is, this is a measuring tool which they have it. If I go down here, I can actually see through this hole where it's going. And because we are so close, the video frames are really, really good one from reconstruction. And again, we can combine this with any other data type, like with traditional measurements with a later scanners on anything like that. In addition, what we did or just today, just for joke, I just did really quick model. We did this quick model from Tomas. Uh, Maxim, you probably know him. This is our CEO. Uh, he was sitting steady. So we tried to do this before with images, but the problem with images is you are not fast enough and people are moving and so on. With the video, you can just go like so around and then extract all frames. And here we have it. Digital, digital twin from Tomas, so CEO of 3D Survey. You have it here. Uh, it's super detailed. Probably this is a next step for plastic surgeries and so on. So uh, as you can see, uh, also the photogrammetry can be super, super powerful. And of course, uh, with the combination of uh, LiDAR scan technology and so on, it's even more realistic and so on. Then you have a recorder here inside. Let's create really quick one video. You set it like so, you add a camera, you add additional camera, camera, 
camera, camera, let's go closer and out. And then you just define the timing for the complete video, click on preview and the magic is already happening. So we are in preview mode. The second step is recording and we have video for sharing with our audience or on Facebook or Instagram or anything like that. Okay, this was a short presentation of 3D survey. I could speak probably two more hours in addition, but we, we are already <laughs> we are already long and additional uh, colleagues are waiting uh, to speak. Uh, if there are any questions, I would like uh, really love to answer them. So, of course, we all, all also have a web page and uh, you can find more information on our web page or on Topodrome web page. Uh, we are a company located in Slovenia and uh, we have a global network of partners, as you can see it here. So feel free to connect, uh, contact us also if there are some questions after the webinar. Markov, thank you for a very good presentation. And you show, I think, the most number of features of your software. It's incredible, especially cut features and rolling shutter distortion. And we have some questions. Once okay. I tried to do a digital twin for telecommunication tower and the model didn't come out as I expected. How does 3D survey compare with regards to 3D model of towers? What do you think? So I have one example, which I could share with this customer after this webinar, maybe if you support me with the contact with the towers, it's important that you map properly. So you need to have good overlap. And if you have enough images, nice results came out, definitely. So not sure how he did the mapping, but this is the most important part. And why the towers are usually really high, you need to fly also sometimes a bit higher. It would be great to see the project and to give him uh, more detailed instructions, but definitely it works. We can extract also cables with the help of photogrammetry out from the cables, but you need to fly on at least 120 meters and set the overlap between images to 80 to 90 percent. If you have a laser scanner, definitely power poles and power cables. This is one of the best applications where you can use the laser scanner. Uh, sorry, and uh, leader actually. So the top of drone leader, definitely. If you have forest and uh, power lines, uh, use leader. If you have urban areas, open areas, stockpiles, volume calculations, anything like that, the photogrammetry is definitely also super, super good. Okay, uh, next question. Thank you for your answer. Does your software work equally with DJI Mavic 2 Pro and Air 2S? given the rolling shutter camera distortion, or is the Phantom 4 Pro is a better option with the mechanical shutter? I, I would just want to explain. In order to remove rolling shutter distortion, we need to know precise position of each image and uh, uh, speed of acquisition. If we use PPK equipment, you can easily remove rolling shutter distortion. This is the case. If you don't use uh, PPK equipment or RTK equipment, on a rolling shutter camera, you don't know any real speed of moving and you don't know precise position of the photos. In this case, it's not possible to remove rolling shutter distortion. But as soon as you know the speed, it is a simple task. Uh, Marco, and now you can answer this question. Yeah, Maxim, well. you, are, uh, you answered already very well. Till we didn't know Topodrome. Okay, we met us, uh, we know Topodrome before, but we met us on Intergeo last year. Uh, we were all, all, always pushing by Phantom 4 Pro or Phantom 4 RTK because they are uh, global shutter cameras. They work really, really nice. But when we made those guys from Topo Drones and they deliver us data set, and uh, we see that also with the rolling shutter, you can achieve super accurate results. I was really surprised with this uh, Mavic 2 Pro solution. But don't forget to fly double grid, okay? Yes, of course, a double grid helps to remove rolling shutter distortion. But on our website, there is a special article how to remove rolling shutter distortion. And we made several flights, just simple grid, double grid, a different flight speed. And if you read this article, you will understand how it works. In, in, in my 
case, in my opinion, I would say that, of course, double grid provides perfect results, but a simple grid, a grid box as well. We, we already tested several times as well as uh, with your software as well. So what we need, we just need to say that the rolling shutter camera is not a huge problem. And it's a reality that rolling shutter can be removed. I saw a lot of messages inside of some Facebook uh, photogrammetric groups and people just say that uh, Phantom Pop Pro is only one drone for survey. No, no. And sometimes Mavic is much better, especially with the quality of the camera. Sometimes in some light conditions, Mavic 2 Pro provides better quality of three-dimensional model in comparison with Phantom 4 Pro. It's a type of sensor, a type of matrix in some conditions. And mm -hmm. also, if you take, we already did some tests with the Mavic Mini 2. Okay, so yes. you get even smaller camera. But if you know how to use it, if you fly lower, you know, 40 meters, and you use the data correctly, you get stunning results out of it. Exactly, exactly. And what I would say is that Mavic 2 Mini, it's, uh, uh, I would never believe in the quality of Mavic 2 Mini. But uh, as I already said, uh, before I was a surveyor, I am receiving a lot of requests to measure some houses and buildings. And uh, I create a special solution for my wife. She's a cadastral engineer and she needs to create a precise measurement of exterior size of the buildings to make a cadastral work. It's not possible for me right now to serve her needs to measure some building. And I create, uh, we created Mavic Mini PPK, and it was given to my son. And my son just fly around the buildings and uh, fly a double grid mission as well. And after that, we create so beautiful details model. And in this case, we can show that survey is now available for any person. Even for oh, the kids, fully just, agree, fully agree yes, with you. Uh, even with the kids who are just flying around the building and after that double grid mission, and after that software reconstruct very beautiful three-dimensional model. And with using of X-ray view from uh, 3D survey, you can easily vectorize side uh, walls of the building. So you can easily vectorize everything. And Mavic Mini has a stable focal length and you will get better results and accuracy and you don't need to move it at all when you calibrate focal lens for Mavic. So it's a, a great advantage. Okay, one more uh, question. This video future be, be used to recreate interior point cloud inside of the buildings? It's a good question and a good question. It's, 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 a, it's a definitely good question. So um, we are still testing this one. What we figure out with the inside of the building is sometimes you're limited with light. And then the video does not give you so sharp frames out of it. So we are right now investigating how to solve this thing. Of course, you can do video with a standard digital camera, which is much better, but uh, you need to have it. Everyone have phones uh, and not everyone have no, you know, standard camera. And the second problematic thing from inside is what kind of texture you have. The photogrammetry always works based on texture. Outside, you have always perfect texture. Inside of the building, if you have a lot of glass, if you have a lot of uh, white walls uh, that they are not colored, or if there are some not so interesting things, the matching could be problematic sometimes. But nevertheless, you can check it out. You can try it out. Uh, we will definitely work on it. And I think uh, the future is also there. Okay, next question. We have a lot of questions for you. If we make a shorter answer, it will be better. Just okay. uh, is uh, this software for the survey processing the photos locally or is it a cloud based? Locally. If, locally, if locally, what are the minimum hardware requirements? We are processing locally. The hardware requirements on our web page, just really quickly, it's great if you have an NVIDIA graphic card, well, like 1050, 60, or some, something like that. Uh, if 3D survey was compared to drone deploy for stockpile measurement, what are the differences? So uh, drone deploy is American web service as we know it. We deliver much more detailed and accurate results. You have much more functionalities because with the cloud solution, you are always limited with functions. So 3D survey, it's a professional tool for surveyors. If you do the volumetrics, you buy 3D survey. 
And I would like to add, 3D survey is the more accurate in point cloud creation, definitely, in removing any kind of distortion of the camera. It's exactly. And of course, it has a lot of CAD tools, vectorization tools, and stockpile measurement tools, which are not available in cloud version. But accuracy of point cloud creation, much better, especially with the using of PPK equipment, definitely. Next question. How drone is being used for 3D cadastral survey? Oh, it's a wide range of using. You can easily import uh, any cadastral measurements in 3D survey underlay with the, uh, with the orthophoto or 3D model. People are doing this on a daily basis. I think you already asked, uh, already said about the latest 3D survey update. I think uh, it was just released yesterday. How do you share data with your customers? Uh, do they need a special application to view? We have a free 3D survey viewer. They can download it from our web page. So our customers just send project to their customers. They can open it. They can see it, uh, what they calculate it out and so on. So free viewer is available. What best setting for classification ground points using software? Well, like uh, angle, cell size, and... Uh, Correctly. And, so and uh, do... During classification, you saw their parameters. Those are good enough for 95% of the project. You can still change them, but those are geometric parameters like angle of the terrain, how big the objects are there, uh, when we are looking for net point, how far should we jump and so on. Do you have uh, such uh, article uh, or any blog post about this? We have 3D survey forum and it's described there. Uh, if you send the link here, maybe it will be interesting. Okay. Uh, okay. Inside of the chat. Which phone did you use for capturing video, I think? Google Pixel 5. Okay. Marco, thank you for perfect presentation.